Web Marketing That Works, Episode 16. Welcome to the Web Marketing That Works podcast. Come behind the scenes of real-life marketing experiments and listen in as amazing guests confess the truth about what really works. Now, here are your hosts, Adam Franklin and Toby Jenkins. Hi everyone, it's Toby Jenkins from the Web Marketing That Works podcast and I'm here with my co-host and friend, Adam Franklin. How's things, Ads? Good, thanks, TJ. That's the way. This is the show for people who love marketing on the web. You'll be taken behind the scenes of real-life marketing experiments. We're going to look at the good, the bad and the ugly. We'll confess what's failed and reveal the truth about what really works. This show is brought to you by our new book, also called Web Marketing That Works and specifically the 33 bonus marketing templates that go with it. If you'd like to get your hands on those templates, please head over to our website and download them from bluewiremedia.com.au backslash book. Thanks, Ads. And a big shout out to a couple of five-star reviewers today. Um, Thanks very much to Patrizio M. um, And also to K. Steph. Thanks very much for your support, guys. It's hugely appreciated. Okay, so the guest for today's show is someone we've followed for quite a long time. His name is Jack Daly, and he's a sales expert from America. Topes, what can we expect in today's show? As I love this show, um, it was really fun interviewing Jack. He's one of the most energetic people uh, I've met, I reckon. <laughs> he's amazing. He, um, he really has a fantastic structure for his sales process and also his marketing process. He talks about um, the key being to care more about the customer than you do about the sale and more about the customer than you do about yourself as well. So that is really the foundation of everything that he talks about. Well, I've really enjoyed listening to the, to the show already. It's really got to hang on to your hat because Jack's so energetic and so fast paces, just a million things to take on board. Um, how about we get started with the show? Yeah, let's rip in. Okay, well, welcome everyone to the show and I'm really excited by our guest today, Jack Daly. I first saw Jack give a presentation in Brisbane and have subsequently seen him in Sydney numbers of times and I can honestly say that Jack is one of the best business presenters and one of the best presenters of anyone that I've seen live on stage. Jack has built businesses since he was 12 working on a newspaper run. As CEO, he built a mortgage company to 750 employees and 22 offices around the US in 18 months and in that first three years of that business to 42 million in profits. He's led sales forces numbering in the thousands and married his high school sweetheart, Bonnie. He's run 65 marathons, 13 Ironman triathlons and played 82 of the US US's top 100 golf courses. The man is a machine. And now he's written a new book, Hyper Sales Growth. So his catch cry is, if you think you know sales, then you don't know Jack. And I have to say, Jack lives this every day and in everything he does. So Jack, it's my absolute privilege and honor to welcome you to the show. So thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Toby, I just listened to your introduction. It got me tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's incredible. Wow. And you just uh, you were just saying you've been um, it's been a hectic start to the year by the sounds of things. Uh, you know what? January sixth, I left the uh, left the home, and I've I've been back a couple times, but it has been uh, just an incredible speaking tour since uh, six January. But along the way, uh, just to, just to, just to continue with the insanity, um, two weeks ago the book went up for sale uh, on a Tuesday. And I was checking it out on Amazon, and I couldn't go to bed until midnight. By midnight, the opening day of the release of the book, uh, we were ranked by Amazon as the number one business book in seven countries. Oh, um, wow. But 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 besides that, uh, I'm 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 on my last day of a three week speaking tour. I actually go home tomorrow. Uh, but when I think about it, uh, and I was thinking about this as you were introducing me on uh, March thirty first. Uh, I did the Ironman in Cabo San Lucas. Once I once I finished the Cabo uh, 
San Lucas uh, Ironman. Two weeks later, I ran the marathon in Kansas. And in April, we launched our online university, which is 13 hours of me with sales management, culture, and sales. Uh, I'm over in, um, in Australia in June with several speaking engagements, but I also am doing an Ironman in Cairns. And then three weeks later, another Ironman in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, and somewhere between now and the end of the year, uh, I've got scheduled to write seven more books. Uh, it's just a crazy, absolute lovable life. Wow, Jack, that is amazing. And um, so the book, this book has obviously gone brilliantly in that case. Congratulations on those seven number one rankings. That's incredible. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, the, I, I, I just have so many people throughout the world that are just so generous uh, with their comments, the reviews on on Amazon, I've yet to get a review that hasn't been five stars. Uh, but but I think they're they're all the Jack fans that are weighing in early. So maybe we'll get some legitimate reviews a little bit later. <laughs> well, there's thousands of those Jack around the world, I'm sure, probably millions. Um, so Jack, if we could just sort of jump in, um, what is your sales philosophy? Yeah, so if, if if I and I started selling at seven years old, and um, I owned the market and charged twice the price of every kid when I was seven that I competed with, and I would tell you that at seven I sold not much different than I sell today, some five decades later, and that is when you care more about the customer than you do about the sell, you'll end up selling more than anyone else out there, even even when it means not you. In other words, when I find the need of a customer or a prospect, um, I really work hard to figure out what the best solution would be for them. And about 20% of my business today, Toby, that calls come in and they want to hire me for a variety of different things. When I know that somebody else is out there better than me, I make that introduction. And what happens there is you build such a absolute foundation of trust that repeat and referral business just stands in line to do business with you. Mm, that's a really, I love that. That's a very simple philosophy. Just care about the customer more than the sale. So I think we'll, so, uh, so, so many, one, so Jack. many sales. Yeah. So, 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 you know, so, so many salespeople are pressed to make their numbers and they view the world in more of a transactional basis. Um, I, I look at it in terms of it's a career and if you're going to build a career in sales, it's going to be based on people trusting you, and it's a long, long career, and you want it to be built on trust. Yeah, that's awesome. And so do you have a marketing philosophy as well? That almost sounds like a life philosophy, Jack. Um, so I do, and uh, from a marketing standpoint, I, I, I have it very simply stated, and that is multiple channels in multiple categories. And that it's got to be about them versus us. And now let me explain that very quickly. So I'm going to, uh, if I, if I'm going to go and market myself or my business, um, I, I, I don't want to do it in a single medium. I'm going to do face to face and phone calls and email and voicemail and snail mail and fax and social media. And I'm going to mix it up in terms of uh, all of those, those medias. Well, I'm also from a content standpoint, I'm not going to be hitting them up with all the things about me and my company. I'll do a little bit of that. But what I'd also like to do is things that would help them in their business that are generic, things that will help them in their business that are industry specific in the industry that they're in, uh, things that I know about them personally. If I, if I like to golf, which I do, or I like to do triathlons, if I find somebody that's in a similar vein, I'm going to be sending them books on how to be a better golfer. I'm going to give them articles on how to be how how, how to be a better triathlete, and th that just irons the it just cements the the relationship that much more. Um, an interesting statistic to pass along here is that most sales organizations and salespeople are not aware, but it takes nine touches before they even know you exist. And most sales organizations and salespeople quit at five. And so mixing them up, having them centric to the customer and doing it on a, on a regular ongoing basis is the key. Yeah. And that's really interesting because we've had a couple of people on the show actually, Jack, who've sort of talked about this merging of sales and marketing 
um, particularly around the web. And I'd be really interested in your thoughts around what you think has happened, you know, with the explosion of the web and all the tools and the information that customers now have at their fingertips. How, how do you, you know, you've had a long career in sales, certainly predating the web. How have you seen it change? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's huge. And I'm glad to hear that you've had other guests on, uh, addressing that, that point. Um, the, the, the things that prospects and customers used to be dependent upon with the salesperson today are much more readily available at their fingertips 24 seven via the web. So uh, that just changed measurably the character of what the salesperson needs to bring to the party. It's not brochures. It's not data, we can get all the information from brochures and data and everything else without a salesperson calling on us. What we really have to understand as a salesperson is to utilize that web so that we can do more pre-work to understand better the company and the prospect and the customer. And if we do our homework and do it well, we will uncover things that possibly we could bring a value to them. And what we're going to do is we're either going to challenge them with where they're at and the direction that they're going in and make that challenge stand tall and then additionally bring some added value to them along the way. And we can do that marrying up our homework on the web with whatever we're doing in our, in our business, whether it, whether it's a product driven or a service business. Yeah, that's a great point. And Jack, in terms of the pre-work, I'm really interested. Is there, are there, you know, a couple of key things that you really look for when you're doing that homework? Yeah, so so I, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a a search based on some keywords that are in different people's websites um, and look for commonalities. And um, when that search takes place, uh, I'm gonna find other people that are playing, if you will, in the same sandbox or in the same niche, and I'm gonna compare their offerings and how they're offering it. And what I'm looking for, Toby, is is what is it that I can bring to the party that's unique or different? Or why is a prospect or customer doing something in a certain way when so many others aren't? Or why are they not carrying a product or service when so many of their competitors are? And what I am what I'm what I'm displaying is that one, I've taken an interest, two, that I've done my homework, and three, I'm 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 partnering with them in effect co-running their company to see if I can help accelerate their top line and their bottom line. Mm, that's really, I mean, you do explore that in the book, Jack. So I just wanted to sort of get you to um, say that out loud because I, I really like that concept of, you know, then I guess using the web and, and to be able to filter that information. And as you say, as intelligence in your sales process and um, demonstrating that you care about the customer as well as you were how, saying earlier. How, how about this one? Um, I, I, I view the whole whole presence of the web as a personal, personal to me, competitive advantage. And the reason I have that mentally is that I'm a guy that uh, hates to go to bed at night and can't wait to get up in the morning. Uh, I, I, I need very little sleep. And this thing called the wide world web is open 24-7. So... <laughs> this crazy man can be uh, doing his homework at five o'clock, four o'clock in the morning when my competitors are asleep. By the time they're ready to go take action at eight o'clock, they're starting to get their game plan together. I'm already executing. Mm, that's huge, isn't it? That's it's a, a beautiful advantage. thing. <laughs> so, Jack, um, the next part of the, this discussion I'd really like to jump into is some of the marketing experiments that you've um, used yourself, um, ideally. In terms of what has worked for you, Jack Daly, as a um, speaker and trainer and coach, um, or potentially your clients, you know, the good, the bad, and we love to dig into the ugly as well, um, because it's yeah. always nice to be aware of um, what pitfalls and what to avoid for our listeners. So can we kick off um, with what you have found has worked really well as a, as yeah, a marketing so, tool? So, so I'm going to go... And, um, and uh, let's, let's do it with social media. Uh, right. There's so many avenues within the social media world, and we play in a good many of them. And I'm going to suggest that uh, the book release two weeks ago to go straight to number one on Amazon in seven countries in a single day um, 
that that was facilitated in a large measure with social media. We we literally went out to our LinkedIn, to our Twitters, to to our Facebook, uh, YouTube, in 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 every dimension that we could possibly go after, and basically said to the masses, "Hey, Jack's book's being released on this day." Um, if you, if you've ever been to one of his events or you've ever heard of him, uh, and you're thinking about buying or investing in this, in this book, that's the day that we want you to show up, go and do it that day. And woof, all of a sudden there's success. Let me show it to you in another way, Toby. I do, uh, I do, I do public workshops around the world. Uh, we do about 25 of them a year. And it's not my core business. My core business is typically speaking to conferences and conventions and, and being hired by specific companies. But we do these things and we advertise that you can buy a seat for the day. And you've been to more than one of those. Absolutely. Um, and and what, we're, what we're finding is that about 20% of the people that are now attending those workshops are coming by way of uh, the social media outreach. And they're friends of friends that have shared our posting that we're coming. Uh, and they come up and introduce themselves and say, gosh, I don't know. I've never heard of you, but my friends just sing your praises. Um, I checked you out. I went on YouTube. Uh, I liked what I saw, liked what I heard. And I'm looking forward to today. Uh, or I have other people that introduce themselves and say, I'll, all I can tell you is you got a lot of people recommending you. And I saw you on Facebook <laughs> and I saw you on Twitter. And you know what? Uh, you better be good because this wasn't cheap and uh, it's taken me a day out of the field. And so the heat comes on before I get on stage. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of heckle to get you going. You know what? But all, all this guy hears, all I hear is, gosh, this social media stuff is really working, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's but, sure. but, but let me let me go back to something we talked earlier about the marketing philosophy. Mm. Um, we, don't, we don't go after the, that that leverage of the social media with just selling us and our stuff. What we're doing regularly is providing value. If you were to subscribe to my YouTubes, I go all over the world and do two, three, four minute videos and I'm doing them while I'm running and I'm doing them while I'm out there and I just have ideas that hit my uh, and all of a sudden I'm in front of Red Square in Moscow or I'm in front of the Eiffel Tower and I just take my iPhone and do a quick three minute video post it to YouTube and my subscribers get another business building idea. So we're pummeling people with ideas on how to build their businesses. And then occasionally we will let people know that we've got a book coming out or we've got a workshop coming out. I, I think that if you approach social media and you bombard uh, your, 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 your followers with all about you stuff, uh, that's, that's where, that's where it gets old. It gets tired and people disconnect. Oh, yeah. Couldn't agree more. That's yeah. That's a really great point. Add value to an extreme, and then you know, ask every now and again. I think is a great way of looking at it, Jack. That's fantastic. Yep. Thanks. Um, so the next question is, you know, have you in terms of failures? You know, what have you learned? What would you do differently? Um, what hasn't worked for you? Yeah. So so I'm going to put this one under under the term webcast or webinars. Okay. Um, we we launched about two years ago. Uh, and thought, gosh, putting a putting a webcast or a webinar on and letting all of our, our all of our media and database out there, knowing that this is existing, that would we would be less wear and tear on Jack Daly. I can do it from my desk at at my home office, uh, and we can reach all over the world and make it easy for people to attend and make it inexpensive for people to attend. And uh, and we actually did. Uh, about 18 of those, and they sit in an archive on my website at jackdaily.net. However, yep. I will tell you that uh, the experience that we had was while people felt they were valuable, the people that plugged in and attended, um, the numbers didn't manifest itself at the magnitude that we thought we would see. For example, we averaged about 100 people plugging in. Mm -hmm. um, and we have that many, as you know, when we do a live event. Yeah. And this was a reach to the world. And, um, and, and, and yet we were reaching out to literally tens of thousands of people on a regular ongoing basis. But we violated one of the things that I just emphasized earlier, and that is, gosh, people gave us feedback that said, 
man, you're beating me up on this webcast to the point that I just I, I just delete any message that you have because you're coming to this webcast because, quote unquote, you're selling too hard. And right. so let me tell you the reaction that I had. Gosh, I don't want to beat up my prospects. And I, that, that wasn't what I was intending. I was all I wanted to tell them was there was this great value with great return and I didn't want them to miss it. But if your customer's telling you that's not what the message is coming across, then you got to change it. So what we changed was uh, we now do webcasts, uh, but we do them for free. And right. we, don't, we, don't, we don't push them hard. We just announce that we're doing webcasts. Here's, here's the access code uh, and, and jump on for free. And our, our thinking is that if you get a little bit of a taste of Jack in a free webcast, when I'm in your area for a live show – or when I when I introduce a book or an audio or a video, you might be interested in, in going a little deeper. And so we've taken that approach. Yeah, interesting. And so initially, were those webinars um, were they a paid? You know, you you're selling registrations to them. Yes, absolutely. We were we What's were charging up. Uh, we were charging a hundred dollars for the hour, right. and you could put you could put several people in the room in a conference room for it. Mm-hmm. And it's it just it still didn't and didn't work. Yeah, right. That's really interesting. And so, what were the numbers? Uh, the change in terms of when you moved to a free webinar versus the paid webinar? Oh, uh, in excess of a thousand people. Right onto your free. Yep. Wow. So ten times the number on the free. Right. Okay. That's incredible. Cool. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, and so. Just to ask a question on those webinars, do you then you know suggest to people at the end? Do you try to sell you know a product or a book or anything like that, or is it purely informational? Yeah. Or how does uh, it work there, for you? Yeah. So so if 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 you can imagine, uh, and you you know my live presentations don't have powerpoints, but when we do the webinars, we're kind of forced into doing them. Um, and so if you can imagine an hour presentation webinar mm. with let's say forty. Uh, PowerPoints that fly by you in the hour. Uh, the last one or two is going to be something about a workshop schedule or the fact that my book is out. Right. And and what's the conversion rate like on that, Jack? Do you, do you know? You know, can you track that conversion rate directly, or it's just it, it's, attendance it's, at your workshops? It's, yeah, it's it's tough to track specifically, but our sense is. There's no downside; it's all upside, and the investment is little to nothing to do them. So why not? Yeah, sure. And what about now that you've got um, Jack Daly University up and running, um, as a, those courses that you were talking about earlier? Is that going to would would that be a likely call to action at the end of those webinars? Do you think? Yeah, I, I, I absolutely. And 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 we we built the online thirteen hour university while. Uh, in the first quarter while we were building our, our uh, strategy on, on launching the book. So what we decided was it, it's available, but we haven't really promoted it to any degree. We, that's a second quarter type of initiative for us. But gotcha. what, we, what we believe is, is that uh, people that will go to that, again, it's a, it's a mentality that's, that says bring your customer value and regardless of the medium that they taste you in, if they like the taste, they will go to other mediums. So instead of cannibalizing the business, we think it's additive. So someone that goes to uh, and, and invest in our online university, which makes it that 24-7 always available at your, at your, at your disp- disposition, uh, they, somebody does that and then six months later finds that I'm in their community with a live event the probability is that they're going to attend that as well. Not say, "Well, I already got it through the university. I don't. I don't need to go." Right? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, okay, so Jack, that's great. Thanks very much for sharing your experience with webinars. It's really interesting. I mean, we're actually looking at kicking one off fairly soon, so very relevant for us too. Um, any uglies? Any shockers that you've had in terms of your uh, marketing experiments? Any sort of catastrophes that you've then had to deal with yeah so i'm 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 not going to speak to any in my speaking business because i really haven't had any you know really ugly things take place sure. but i will speak to a business that i had prior to getting in the speaking business and that was i was in the residential mortgage lending business and we were early on enters 
into uh, leads uh, throughout the United States that we would um, acquire um, internet leads. And the attractiveness of the internet leads was uh, the price point uh, because there were people that were producing these leads in mass quantity on the, on the web. Uh, but, but our disaster was that very few of them converted into business. Even though the price point was inexpensive, our people were spending a dis- disproportionate amount of time chasing non-real deals. And we also found that the people that were producing the leads were selling them to two, three, four companies uh, simultaneously. Right. Interesting. So, so if it's not your own list, would you warn people away from that process then, in your opinion? Uh, I, 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 would, I, would, I would tell them to tread lightly and inspect deeply. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, that's a good philosophy, I think. Um, okay, that's awesome. And Jack, look. I'm you know, gonna... there's, a, there's another phrase out there that, uh, that's, that goes, dates back to at least my parents and probably their parents, and that is, um, you tend to get what you pay for in life. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair comment. Um, yeah. Hey, Jack, so I'm conscious of your time. Um, is it okay to keep going or do you? Uh, I'm, to- I'm, I'm, okay. I'm good with you. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm all good. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, if, if you don't mind continuing. So if you were, um, if you were kicking off, you know, Jack Daly speaker from scratch, where do you think you might start? first in terms of you web marketing or marketing broadly so um i i'm gonna i'm gonna use a couple terms here that i use with any business because i don't think it's unique to me and i think it wouldn't be applicable to any business that might be listening in here um one, one of those concepts is model the masters um don't try you know somebody's probably ought to figure somebody's probably already figured this side of the business out i don't have to go and, and, and become the expert. Um, and the second is leverage. And that is how can I generate more business with less work? And so, uh, 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 what we do in the speaking business is that we recognize the power of the web. We recognize the power of social media. And we also recognize that we aren't anywhere close to the masters or the experts. So, um, we've engaged a company that is, uh, their, their name is Kirk Global, and the Kirk Global, um, it's from start to finish, uh, is aligned with our business, understands our business, and uh, there's not much of anything that's going on uh, in the Jack Daly world that doesn't get run through Kirk and then kind of designed and then rolled out through the web. Um, and so, you know, I, my business, I've intentionally built very lean. Uh, there are no employees. I have seven independent contractors that do different things and they interact from time to time with Kirk global, but Kirk, Kirk global is, is, is the central, uh, brain center, if you will, from the standpoint of, uh, what we're doing in the, in the web. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I'll have to, uh, look into them. Um, and so what's next on the sort of marketing and business front then for you? I mean, you've said, you know, the university's kicking off uh, in this, this quarter now that the book is launched. Um, yeah, what's, what else is on the agenda for you? So uh, it's a great question. Uh, you know, more of the same when it comes to speaking gigs. It's what I really like and it's, it's um, you know, this is a quality of life business that I'm doing this out of passion more than anything else. Uh, we just get tremendous feedback from companies and from individuals about what 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 what's happening with their businesses as a result of of tapping into what we're talking about. But the uh, the, the biggie for me uh, is 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 two front. One of them is uh, growing our public events. So uh, what started out as a response to small to medium sized companies saying, "Hey, I don't have enough salespeople to to hire you. Where do I send them?" And, I, and there was no place to send them. And I started with one workshop uh, and we've evolved over time producing these. But it was never a goal of mine to do uh, selling the seats. you got to market them. you got to find the hotel property. And there's a lot of logistics that go on with that that's, that's a lot more than a company coming and engaging me for my services. However, what we found is, is that they're working for our, our customers and they're now working for us. 
from the standpoint of a viable business. So then the answer, the, the, the point there being is rather than have an audience of 50 to 100 people, well, what, let's deliver it at 300 to 500 people. Let's deliver it at 400 to 700 people. Um, it, 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 there's not any more work involved to do that uh, other than try to generate that business. So mm. if you will, I can tie in the launch of a book and making the book into a bestseller and therefore extending the Jack Daly brand and then leveraging the things that we're doing on the web such that we put more people in the seats. So that's one uh, thing that we're doing uh, going forward. And the second is that I talk about the absence or the shortfall in sales management of so many small to medium sized companies. So we actually built this past year a channel of virtual coaches that can coach anybody in their business from a selling standpoint, implementing my proven systems and processes anywhere in the world, and they never have to leave their home. It's all done over Skype and the phone and the internet. And so growing the leverage coach business and growing our public events is the two big thrusts uh, we've got coming going forward on top of all the other normal stuff. Yeah. And so what, how, how would someone find out about the leverage coach business? Yeah, just uh, go, 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 go to leverage sales management, uh, dot com and, um, and, and, and we go from there. Yeah. Great. Right. I also mention it in the last uh, page of, uh, of the book as well. Yeah, I had seen that. I'll put that in the show notes, Jack, actually. Um, it's leveragesalesmgmt.com, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, I'll put that in the show notes for the listeners, um, but certainly worth checking out. Jack, the final question is a bit of a personal question that I you know, really wanted to ask you, which is um, you know, you have an incredible level of energy and you've already said that you don't need to need a lot of sleep. You know, is there a daily ritual that you follow? Is there, you know, is there something that's a discipline that you follow in your life that sort of helps you keep that energy up because you, you've got a, an incredibly demanding schedule? How do you jump? Yes. That? Yeah. So, 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 you know, uh, there's a lot of components. And uh, the first one I would tell you is I think I got lucky in the gene pool. Uh, <laughs> And so there's not much that people can do about that one, but I really view, feel myself very fortunate because I, when I was just a little little tyke running around the house, people remarked about the energy. Um, the second is 50% or more of success at anything is in your head. And I wake up every morning with a zest for life. I love life. Uh, and I'm, I just, I, I, I'm so positive that my head is filled with positivity is very, 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 very difficult for anyone to get me down. Uh, And, you know, I I have a philosophy that says you focus on those things that you have control over and those things that you don't don't exist. And so, you know, the plane gets canceled uh, or the bags get lost on a trip and I don't see them for five or six days. Um, There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, You know, life moves on. Uh, let's go on with the rest of the agenda. What do I need to do to, in order to knock the things that I want out? Uh, and I do them. A, a third thing besides what's going on in the head and the gene pool is uh, taking care of myself physically. People, for the most part, take care of their cars better than they take care of their person. Um, you, you, you keep a car for three years, five years, seven years, and you bring it into the, into the service center with regular they give you a schedule, you follow the schedule, you don't want it to fall out of warranty, and three to five to seven years later, you get rid of the car. But I watch people, and the only time they go to the doctor is when they're on their deathbed. Uh, I've been going to a doctor twice a year for physicals since I was 28 years old. Uh, I, I'm very conscious of my exercise program. I have a schedule of exercise, things that need to be done on a regular, ongoing basis. And, and a lot of that is conditioned by the fact that I am an endurance athlete and I have to, otherwise I'll die on the races. <laughs> um, and then, and then, and then I'm, I'm very cognizant of what I eat. And that doesn't say that I, I don't go out and drink. Uh, I've never smoked a cigarette though. Uh, I've never done drugs. Uh, so I'm, but I'm, 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 but I'll have more than my share of wine at times, but, <laughs> but I'm, but you know, I'm going to stay away from fried foods. I'm going to, I'm going to opt for veggies and I'm going to opt for fish more than I'm going to opt for meat. 
um, and, and potatoes and breads and those types of things that are just going to make me feel a little bit lethargic. And I just find that just being aware and being conscious of all those things and making sure that I'm disciplined and, and anybody that's met me, uh, is, is discipline I, is not, 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 not a strong enough word. Um, it, 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 <laughs> the, the, the regularity of the way I run my life from day to day, uh, is, is at a, at an exceptional level. But because of that, um, the energy just exudes. The, the last thing I would tell you is that I tell every one of my audiences, and that is put yourself in a place of passion. Uh, I love what I do, Toby. And I, I you know, I, I, t- the, today here in the States, it's Wednesday, and I'm watching Facebook and people are posting pictures and photos of, of camels because, quote unquote, it's hump day. And I think to myself, you know, my God, get a life and go reposition yourself in a place that you don't feel like hump day. I, I, I'm not looking forward to the weekend. I'm loving every day. I love what I do. And when you find your place of passion, the energy shows up. You're excited. Think about kids. The kids are energetic all day until they collapse. And the reason is they've got so much passion for what they're doing and they view the world as fun. Well, uh, you're talking to a, a guy in his 60s that's just one big kid. <laughs> oh, Jack, that is awesome. Oh, thank you very much. Actually, if you don't mind, I might just dig a little deeper, which is you, you talk about the structure of your day. You know, you, you're very disciplined in your day. Are there, you know, is there an approach to your day? Are, are you a calendar man? Are there particular things that you do in terms of organizing your day and knowing what you're doing tomorrow and you know, what your plans are? Yeah. So, so, you know, it, it, when we, when we do our live events, people that go to the extreme of really, they're laughing at some of the stuff and I tell them they don't get to this level cause it's very sick, but I've been doing <laughs> this since I was 13, but you know, in my personal life, uh, I'm very goal oriented and very measurable, measurable metrics. And I measure everything in a calendar. Uh, you could do it with an app, but I've been doing it with pen and paper since I was 13. So I'm just not, I'm not going to go to an electronic format, but I spend 10 minutes a day at the end of the day, reflecting on what, what I did. I look at my, what, what I need to do for that day. It's all broken down by day, by week, by month. Uh, if you went to my website at jackdaily.net, uh, you would end up finding my goals are posted for all the world to see. My bucket list is posted and a quarterly summary that I do to what I call my board of directors of my life, which are five people that I meet with one on one four to five times a year that hold me accountable. And so because of all that system and process I've set up, uh, you know, I just I just I just need to do those things. Now, what I would tell you about my exercise and all that is that an awful lot of people they'll talk about. Uh, I, I, they don't have the discipline to get, to do the exercise. I don't even think of it anymore. I've been doing it so long that, um, you don't think about brushing your teeth in the morning. It's just part of your process of life. Mm. And you know what? It's the same thing with me riding a cycle in the gym or working out with weights or going for a run or going for a swim. It, it's just, it's like breathing to me. I, I, a day without that is a, is, is just a, a, a gas, a pall, um, mm. not where I want to go. Sure. Oh, that's really cool. And Jack, has there been anyone in particular that you know you've learned from? I mean, you know, there must be a stack of people. But are there? You know, could you share with the audience maybe? You know, what if there's people or um, books, blogs, presentations, any that really stand out? I know in your book yeah, you, know, so- you really name um, Jim. Jim it, Pratt. Jim Pratt. Yeah. 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 I mean, Jim is is a, a dad stand in for me, uh, just an immeasurable, uh, imprint on my life. Uh, Jim Pratt today is in his mid eighties. He'd have me, he'd have my ass for telling that. Uh, <laughs> but he, here's a guy in his mid eighties that is, uh, still, uh, still active, uh, in, 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 in life, uh, still, still is on a treadmill every day. Uh, and uh, and just embraces life with a similar passion that I do. And and I, I used to sit next to him 20 years my senior. Uh, we'd speak at an event together, and we'd then go to, to the plane to go some to visit somewhere else. 
I, I, I'm sitting in the plane pretty much exhausted and he's got his, he's got his, his sheets out, his to-do list out, and he's, he's just, just knocking stuff out. And he's 20 years older than I am. And I'm just sitting there going, my goodness, there's a guy that's raising the bar. Mm. And, uh, I, I've evolved into being Jim Pratt. People sit next to me and go, my goodness, when do you stop? And I'm like, oh, my wife tells me that I, I kind of pass out in bed in the middle of a sentence. And when I wake up in the morning, I finish the sentence. Uh, <laughs> it's just, just the way it is. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'd, al- I'd also mention, though, that I'm a voracious reader, Toby. And so I, I, we're, we never know enough. Uh, uh, th- this week uh, already I've read two business books. And, uh, and I, you know, Which ones, and yeah. I've, uh, I, the, uh, they, they, they typically have to do with a, on the sales side of the house. One of them was the challenger sale. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's a, it's a very, very strong book. Uh, and the other one was Nick Saban, who was a coach, mm. uh, of a football team here in the States. That's won three out of the four national championships and it's his disciplines of life. Um, I cite him in my, my, uh, workshops often. So yeah. I thought that I'd read a book by him. So, mm. oh, great. Oh, thanks very much for sharing those then, Jack. And it, would there be a, would the, if someone could only, if you had only one book you could take on a desert island, what would you take? I would take endurance. And, um, uh, it, it, it has to do with, um, Shackleton and his exploration. Um, and, uh, and, uh, it, 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 when, when I read endurance for the first time and I've been through it about 12 times, Who's uh, it written by? when I read um, uh, what's that? Who's it written by? Uh, I, I don't have it off the top of oh, my head. Okay. I'll find it. Sorry. But, but, but it, it's, it's, it's Shackleton's voyage mm. and it, and it's endurance. And, and, and if the book is, let's just say the book is 250 pages. When I got to page 40, I was like paging through the rest of the book on what else could be in the book. This guy has gone to hell and back seven times mm. and what it re- Really speaks to is we really as human beings are really not conscious of how much we're capable of doing and what you have inside of you that you can draw in your heart and your soul and then your physical self is is quite remarkable and somewhat immeasurable um and and so you know today i, I i've now raced Um, in the last seven years, I've now raced 14 Ironmans and I have four or five full Ironmans I'm racing this year at 57. I didn't know how to swim. And here I am at 65 doing these Ironmans and inclusive of Ironman world championship in Kona in Hawaii. Uh, if, if you're serious and want to do whatever you want to do in life, I'm of the belief that you can draw within yourself and then go find the masters to help you figure out the journey. Mm. That's that's a great parting thought there, Jack. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, so, Jack, how can our listeners connect with you? What's the best way to get um, you know well, into the, if, into if the somebody, world of Jack Daly? Yeah, I'm I'm extremely accessible and and pretty responsive directly with my uh, with my um, email address, which is Jack at JackDaly.net, and then Daly is D A L Y. Um, and, and I don't have other people fielding my, uh, field, fielding my emails. I just, uh, I'm really good about getting back to people on that. The other one obviously is to just go to the website and there's a chock full of information there and it's Jack, uh, it's, it's jackdaily.net. Great. Well, Jack, again, huge, huge thank you very much for your time and, uh, for joining us today on the show. That's just been brilliant. Thanks. Really appreciate uh, it. Toby, since, since I first met you and your guys, um, you've been standouts. Uh, I will tell you that uh, less, less than 30% of the people that typically go to seminars and workshops actually take action and do things. And I've watched you from, well, I think it might have been five or six years ago that we first met. Mm. Uh, you, you guys have just stepped up to the plate with energy, enthusiasm, and action. And uh, uh, at, like I've, I, that's what I, that's why I get up in the morning and do what I do. No, oh, thanks, Jack. It's very kind yeah. of you. Well, best of luck with um, Hypersales growth as well, Jack. I'll give that one more plug. I have just finished it yesterday. Um, it's a cracker. It's like Jack having, sorry, it's like having Jack in your back pocket. So I highly recommend that you jump on board and get Hypersales growth. And um, Jack, thanks again.
All right, now I'll see you when I get over there in June. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Toby. Wow, what an interview with Jack Daly. Tobes, thanks so much for getting him on the show. Yeah, no worries. I mean, the pleasure was really mine. I just love talking to Jack. It's really inspiring. I mean, some of the things that I really took out of that show ads was, um, you know, and thank you to Jack for sharing really some detail as to what has worked and what hasn't worked. But it was really interesting to hear him talk about the free webinar versus the paid webinar um, and the fact that by moving it from $100 a ticket to free, he more than 10 times his, his audience, which I thought was extraordinary. And then, um, you know, the buying of an audience who has no trust with you by buying leads through his mortgage business was what he said was probably his worst marketing <laughs> catastrophe. So that was really cool too to hear him sort of share those those details. So it was just great to him, Jack. Yeah, it's nice to know that even the uh, even the super gurus make mistakes here and there and learn from them. Um, but just his approach to sales, caring for the customer, really, you know, looking at that lifetime career in sales being the the end goal, not just trying to you know win each transaction um, on its own, but thinking that lifetime value of the customer. I really liked. And Tobes, a question I've got for you is: What are some of the things that you've implemented based on Jack's workshops and book? Look, I think one of the really simple things was that idea of personalised follow-up. And one example that I can think of was the we had a client, a multinational client, uh, who we sent a letter to afterwards and you know, personally signed it and sent the letter to say thank you very much for the um, project and got a response back from them saying, wow, you know, in this day and age of electronic communication and you guys being a web company um, to receive a hard copy letter was extraordinary and much appreciated and and, um, thank you very much and without a doubt you know we went on to do much much more work with that particular client and to me that was a direct well Jack's direct influence on that process so that was pretty cool. Um, Did you have anything that you felt we've done? Yeah, certainly, again, the simple things like Jack was always big on sending cards to people to thank them for work or what have you. And it's amazing how many clients' offices I've been into where the thank you card that, that Ange had actually made, handmade herself, she took a photograph in this particular case of some muffins that she'd made or some cupcakes that she'd made, sorry, in the blue wire colours with the icing on. And it's amazing, you know, clients actually have them still up in their offices months and even sometimes years after we've We've sent them to them and the number of emails and that we've received and that Andrew's received saying, I loved your card, you know, it's still up in the office. You know, I think there's those little things that show that you care um, that we've implemented based on Jack's insights have really had such a, you know, such a great impact and such a, you know, talking point that is, you know, that's just the really simple stuff that Jack talks about. So there's, you know, so much more in the book and in Jack's courses that that's just an example of what, what we've put into practice and, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't change it at mm-hmm. all now. And actually, just one final point, adds. I feel as though one of the things that I've learned from Jack has been um, his presentation style and the energy that he brings to a presentation, I, I think, makes him, as I said again in the introduction, but makes him the best business presenter that I've seen and certainly in a workshop environment, absolutely phenomenal. Um, lifting a crowd after a whole day of workshop, which is often the toughest crowd at 4 p.m., um, on day two of a workshop is, and I've seen him really lift and, and particularly his use of a flip chart I have found really useful in my own presenting in terms of drawing up um, all the steps in the process so people can see the connections being made as opposed to just throwing a graphic on a screen. So that was something else that I've picked up from Jack that I really enjoyed. And how many marathons in Ironman did you say you've done? He has done 65 marathons in 13, 35 states in the US. He's done 13 Ironmen, having not um, having not been able to swim 25 metres at the age of 57. He's done 13 Ironmen by the time he's 65. And uh, he is just, the man is a machine. There's a guy with some energy, very inspiring stuff. <laughs> yep, incredible. Okay, so with no more questions, I guess... Um, This show was brought to you by our book, Web Marketing That Works, and the 33 templates that go with it. So if you are keen to download them, head over to bluewiremedia.com.au backslash book. There are plenty of sales templates in there as well. 
some influenced obviously by Jack Daly's thinking. The intent on these shows is to deliver actionable advice. Your feedback and questions are very much welcome. So if you could let us know via email or Twitter, email for me is adam.franklin at bluewiremedia.com.au and Twitter is franklin underscore adam. Uh, for me, email address is toby.jenkins at bluewiremedia.com.au and on Twitter, I'm toby underscore Jenkins. If you've enjoyed the show, we'd love you to leave an honest review on iTunes. Thanks so much. We'll give a shout out to the five-star reviewers and look forward to seeing you next time. See you guys.